to the webinar. Today we are pleased to have Kazakh Navoyan uh, from Thompson River University in British Columbia, Canada. And she is speaking on the past of your property on space of regular multilinear operators. Kazakh, please go ahead and share your uh, screen and start. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, so many thanks to Professor Sari for this wonderful opportunity to participate in the webinar. And thanks so much to everyone for attending my talk. Uh, I am a postdoctoral fellow at Thompson Rivers University, and the title of my talk is The Positive Sure Property on Spaces of Regular Multilinear Operators. Uh, so I will start by introducing some necessary definitions and in particular a risk space or a vector lattice, which is the same, is an ordered vector space with the property that the supremum of any two elements of the space uh, again belongs to the space. And um, for any vector uh, in a risk space, we define the uh, positive part. Uh, I mean, the vector has a positive part, which is the supremum of that vector uh, and zero, and has a negative part, which is the infimum of that vector and zero, and the modulus of the vector is the supremum of that vector with its negative in a risk space or a vector lattice. And also we know that any vector is uh, can be uh, represented as a difference of its positive and negative part and the modulus is their sum. And also we uh, call a risk space dedicated complete if every non-empty subset which is bounded above has a supremum. Uh, also uh, an operator uh, T between two ordered vector spaces is positive if it is if T if uh, if its value at a vector is positive whenever the vector is positive. Also, I call a, an operator T regular if it is the difference of two positive operators and uh, the notation here. L R E F denotes the space of all regular operators from uh, the let's say risk space E to risk space F. So uh, also we define uh, T to be a, let, a lattice homomorphism if T on the supremum of two vectors is uh, equal to the supremum of its value at those vectors. Uh, also, uh, I want to introduce the uh, definition for the positive projective tensor product. But first, this notation here denotes the vector lattice tensor product of the risk spaces or vector lattices E1EM and uh, the um, detailed construction of this uh, vector lattice tensor product can be found in the 1972-1974 papers of Fremlin. Uh, we just, uh, uh, I just, um, uh, we just put uh, the uh, norm on this vector lattice tensor product, define the positive projective tensor norm to be the infimum of this expression here for any element of this vector lattice tensor product. And the positive projective tensor product is the completion of the vector lattice tensor product under this lattice norm. Well, um, uh, and also we need that uh, to define uh, an almost Danforth Pettis operator in general, when we say almost or upper, this, uh, these two concepts really uh, usually relate to positivity con concept. And uh, we, uh, an operator T from a Banach lattice E into a Banach space X is said to be almost Danforth Pettis if Txn in norm goes to zero, for every positive weekly conversion to zero sequence Xn in uh, the um, domain space E. Also, we say that the Banach lattice E has the positive true property if the identity operator on E is almost done for Petis, that is norm of Xn goes to zero for every positive weekly conversion to zero sequence Xn in E. Uh, we also need, uh, uh, we also recall that for Banach spaces E and F, a sequence of operators uh, converges to zero in the weak operator topology if uh, for any functional 
uh, y star on f and any element x in e, uh, y star applied on t and x, t and x is element of f, uh, goes to zero as n goes to infinity. And uh, in uh, Pe Pedro Tredesacci, in his paper of 2015, uh, defines the, uh, I mean, I have this definition from that paper, and uh, for uh, let for uh, Banach lattices E and F, the subspace X of the regular linear uh, um, space, um, the the the, uh, the space of regular linear operators from E to F, has the weak operator topology PSP or WOT PSP. If every positive sequence of operators in uh, X, which uh, converges to zero in the weak operator topology, this definition above. Also, it follows that norm of TN goes to zero. So uh, we will also need these two uh, definitions of, uh, uh, sorry, these two theorems. Uh, of course, the 1992 theorem of NAC telling that if E and F are Banach lattices and F is Dedekind complete, then the regular linear operator space has the positive shoot property if and only if the dual of the domain space and the target space have the positive shoot property. Also, oh, uh, here uh, we have this theorem in uh, the book of L. Prentice and Burton Show telling that if E and F are Ries spaces and F is dedicated complete, then the uh, regular linear operator space is a dedicated complete Ries space. And for any uh, element T of this LREF, the modulus of T exists and is defined to be, to, to be the supremum of those uh, expressions TY. Uh, the, those expressions ty, uh, where the supremum is taken over those uh, y uh, such that their modulus is less than or equal uh, to this x here. Also, um, this theorem of Bu and Basquez of 2012 will be of use, telling that if E1 and EM are Banach lattices, then for any uh, Banach lattice f and any regular m linear operator t, uh, there exists a unique uh, oper linear operator T, regular operator T tensor, uh, such that this diagram commutes. And if uh, F is dedicated complete, then there uh, is a lattice homomorphism and isometric isomorphism between these two spaces here, the space of regular multilinear operators and regular linear operators. And uh, uh, the first result I want to introduce um, is um, the following. So we know that there is a long-standing problem about finding conditions on, on the Banach spaces uh, such that those conditions will make the positive projective tensor product to have the PSP and uh, the other uh, like analogous uh, problem in positivity uh, will be to find conditions on Banach lattices such that they will make the positive projective tensor product to have the PSP. Uh, and, um, uh, I think that second problem has been visited not very frequently, not as frequently maybe than that uh, projective tensor product problem. But here in this result, we introduce several equivalent conditions to uh, for the po 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 positive projective tensor product to have the PSP. So this uh, theorem in some sense gives more ways to approach that long-standing or at least one of those long-standing problems. Mm, uh, and uh, for example, here I want to introduce point two for every Banach lattice G and any regular M linear operator T. This linearization that we had in Bulbaskia's theorem here, the T tensor here, uh, not only existent is unique, but is also uh, almost Danforth Pettis operator. And the third point is kind of obvious that it follows from two for every Banach lattice G and any uh, multilinear regular operator T, uh, there exists a Banach lattice H, M linear operator A, 
uh, from the Cartesian product to H, and an almost done for Pettis operator U from H to G, such that uh, T is the composition of U and A. And uh, there is also an interesting definition that we introduce. Uh, so F is a Banach lattice F is positively isomorphic to a subspace of a Banach lattice E if there is a positive, necessarily positive linear operator T from Banach lattice F to E. And uh, this is an isomorphism. Why uh, positive is necessary? Because in this case, only this uh, following lemma holds and uh, uh, so if uh, E and F are Banach lattices such that F is positively isomorphic to a subspace of E, then the larger subspace has the PSP, then F also inherits the PSP. So uh, this uh, being positively isomorphic guarantees that uh, the positive shoot property will be inherited. Um, and maybe this kind of illustrates why, for example, the space L101 has the positive sure property, while L2, which is included in it, does not have. Um, so uh, our, uh, the other result I want to give here is the following. We uh, um, assume that E1, E2, and F are Banach lattices, and F is dedicated complete. Then the bilinear regular operator space has the positive sure property if and only if the duals of E1 and E2 and F have the PSP. I kind of bring here some uh, a quick uh, sketch of the proof. Um, so when we assume that, uh, uh, when we assume uh, that the duals of E1 and E2 and F have the PSP, then we know this uh, this kind of, uh, that the, the dual of the positive projective tensor product is uh, lattice homomorphic and, uh, and, and, and isometrically isomorphic to the regular linear operator space. So uh, we can apply Nux theorem on this space here. Why? Because uh, Nux theorem, I want to remind not to go back to that slide, uh, requires that the uh, dual of the domain have the PSP and the target space have the PSP also. And we have that E1 star, E2 star have the PSP. So we can conclude that this space has the PSP, of course, considering that the dual space is always dedicated complete. And hence this um, dual space e has the PSP, of course. And then now we have that this dual for example, in this space, uh, this dual of the domain space has a PSP and the target space has the PSP. We apply Nux theorems once again and get that this uh, uh, like regular, let's say linear operator space, I'm showing it with the cursor, uh, has the PSP. And then by Bu and Basque's theorem telling that there is a lattice homomorphism and uh, isometric isomorphism between these two spaces when, the target, when this F is dedicated complete concludes that this space has the PSP. So we one direction we have for the other direction when we assume that this uh, space regular bilinear operator space has the PSP um, the proof might go the following way. We fix uh, a functional uh, phi 2 on uh, the positive non-zero functional phi 2 on the dual, uh, on, uh, on, on the Banach lattice E2. And uh, uh, then we fix element y, and um, uh, then y belongs to, uh, y is positive, y is non-zero. And then we define the operator T, which takes the dual of E1 into this regular bilinear operator space. And we can easily see that this T is positive and it's an isomorphism. So recalling that lemma that we had above, uh, this E1 star is positively isomorphic to this bilinear operator space. And this bilinear operator space it was assumed, because this is the other direction of the proof of the theorem, was assumed to have the positive sure property. So E1 star has the PSP in a very analogous way. We get the E2 star has the PSP to prove that F has, oh, sorry, that F has the PSP. Uh, 
uh, VE define the operator T in a slightly different way and uh, by fixing beforehand V1 uh, non-zero positive on uh, E1 on E1 or, or, and V2 belonging to E2 star again positive and non-zero and then having the following form of the positive and uh, positive operator T which is also an isomorphism onto its range. Uh, so this was the proof of this theorem and before going to the next result I would uh, love to introduce some discussion about um, the space of regular weak star to weak star continuous operators uh, and um, uh, so this is an ordered vector space under the pointwise ordering but under this ordering it uh, we will show now that this space under the given ordering is not a vector lattice or is not a recess space we will do that by uh, showing that uh, for specific or for particular banach lattices some e and f uh, there is an operator t between them uh, uh, such that the modulus of the adjoint of this operator doesn't belong to this space, doesn't belong to the regular, uh, to the space of regular big star to big star continuous uh, operator space. This, why this will be enough? Because the adjoint of an operator we know belongs to this space, the space of regular big star to big star continuous operators, but um, uh, for for then the modulus does not belong to this space, then this is not a lattice, is not a risk space. So mm, uh, we 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 uh, will be using an example which is an intermediary intermediary example which will which just shows that the modulus of a joint is strictly less than the adjoint of the modulus while there is a theorem in this book that tells that uh, the, the modulus of the adjoint is less than or equal in general to uh, there is no strict inequality between these two between the modulus of the adjoint and the adjoint of the modulus so I want to tell the history of this example. Actually, I visited Professor Troitsky in uh, U of Alberta in Edmonton, and I noticed that there is a mistake in this example. And then Professor Troitsky corrected this example number 1.74 and uh, introduced a new example, which is below. So uh, the operator T from C to C, where C is the space of con con convergent sequences, uh, is defined by the following equation. So x1, this x is t applied on x, x1, x2 are the coordinates of x, x uh, is an element of c, is a convergent sequence of real numbers, and uh, we can easily see that this is a regular operator because it is a difference of two positive operators, and we want to see that, uh, that this uh, uh, modulus of t applied on x, uh, of course, the definition for the modulus of t uh, applied on an element is defined by the supremum, as was mentioned above. Uh, this is the risk contour of which theorem, which one can find in this book in particular. Then uh, we want just to see that the modulus of this t applied to uh, x is x1 plus x2, x2 plus x3, etc. So to have an, uh, an equality, we will prove two inequalities. To prove the first uh, inequality, we first fix x positive uh, to be in C, to be a convergent sequence of real numbers. Then we take an arbitrary y, this is y, y1, y2, y3, etc. in C, uh, so that the modulus of this y is less than or equal to x fixed beforehand. Then uh, we uh, know that the modulus of a sequence, according to our ordering, is the sequence of the modules, modules of uh, each coordinate. So this is the equality here, and this is less than or equal to x. That is, module y1 is less than or equal to x1, module y2 is less than or equal to x2 and hence now we apply operator t on y and we get 
uh, according to the definition of T, Y1 minus Y2, Y2 minus Y3, Y3 minus Y4, etc. And this is uh, according uh, by the triangular inequality, of course, uh, is less than module Y1 plus module Y2, module Y2 plus module Y3, etc. And this is less than or equal to X1 plus X2, X2 plus X3, etc. This is T applied on Y. But uh, then, and Y satisfies the requirement that modulus of y is less than or equal to x. So uh, if we take supremum over all those type of y's, we will have this supremum, that this supremum is less than or equal to this sequence x1 plus x2, x2 plus x3, etc. But this supremum is defined to be modulus of t applied on x. So modulus of t applied on x is less than or equal to x1 plus x2 to the sequence having coordinates x1 plus x2, x2 plus x3, etc. And uh, uh, so uh, the one side of like, like one of the necessary inequalities we have for the other, we again fix uh, an element x in uh, the Banach lattice C, uh, which uh, and we want x to be positive, and uh, this this notation means that it's uh, on the uh, it's a positive element x is greater than equal to zero according to the ordering. So, uh, and now we will take y uh, y y not as arbitrary as we did above, uh, less arbitrary as we did above. We will take it to be x one minus x two. X is fixed beforehand x3 minus x4, etc. And we notice that the modulus of y is exactly x1, x2, but we will put here less than or equal to. Of course, this is also true. So now we apply t on y1 by 2. According to the definition of t, we get that this is y1 minus y2, etc. Y, okay, y1 minus y2, y2 minus y3, etc. But now we plug in the values of y1, y2, y3, and we will have y1 which is x1 minus y2 which is negative x2 so this will be x1 plus x2 y2 minus y3 will be minus x2 minus x3 and then x3 plus x4 so this is t applied on y but now we will go to the expression of modulus of t applied on x uh, modulus of t applied on x and uh, then uh, we have the formula, it is supremum of all those Tz, where modulus of z is less than or equal to x, and in particular, we see that this y is an element of this set, the supremum of which is taken. So we can say that this supremum is greater than or equal to T applied on y and taken the modulus. Uh, so we take the modulus of ty and this will be the mod the sequence of modulus of of modules of each coordinate so it will be x1 plus x2 x2 plus x3 x3 plus x4 because x is taken to be positive so we have also the other uh, inequality modulus of t on x is greater than or equal to that sequence we I want it from the very beginning, x1 plus x2, x2 plus x3, etc. So we have that going back to what we wanted to show. We wanted we, we now have that module t on x is x1 plus x2, x2 plus x3, when t is defined in by the following equation. Uh, and then we go ahead and and now we discuss, uh, we, uh, we look at the, the adjoint of T and we uh, kind of put here, uh, just uh, recall that it's from C, uh, dual, dual of C to dual of C. It's, it's easier to have a dual here because dual uh, is that it can complete and uh, we will need it uh, uh, later. Mm -hmm. And we already used the fact that dual is that it can complete. And we uh, define the positive functional phi on C on the Banach lattice of convergent sequences uh, by the following equation. Phi on X is limit Xn and goes to infinity for any 
sequence in C. We have the element E uh, uh, is constant one, 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 this is in C. And we have this uh, uh, equalities. Uh, so the adjoint of modulus of T applied on phi, the adjoint uh, also goes from C star to C star. This is a functional uh, on C. So it's applied on an element of C. Uh, then we use the property of the adjoint to get phi applied on modulus of T on E. And this is here that we have uh, the way how modulus of T uh, like uh, applies on an element it because uh, modulus of t I just want to uh, just uh, for my name go back modulus of t and imagine here is e one 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 so will be one plus one one plus one one plus one so that's why we will have here we'll have here phi applied on two 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 and phi does uh, this it returns the limit so this is two we have that the adjoint of modulus uh, applied on uh, adjoint of modulus applied on phi and this functional applied on e is two is not zero is two is strictly positive now we go um, to some direction to get a contradiction or yeah to get a contradiction so we recall that we, we just uh, consider that c star is a dual space is that it can complete and so now um, that just like modulus t modulus t exists because c is that it can complete the same way modulus of the adjoint exists and is defined by the same formula here by this supremum so uh, we have the formula for modulus of the adjoint and we choose uh, psi in c star i, I mean not c star in the dual of c which satisfies that modulus of psi is less than or equal to phi and uh, we take any positive element vector c uh, so, sorry x1 x2 etc we take x to be positive and to be in c now we um, look at the adjoint applied on psi and then this applied on this x in modules again we apply here the property of the adjoint and get psi applied on tx and then there is an uh, known inequality that this is less than or equal to modulus of psi applied on modulus of tx and this is less than or equal to phi according to our choice applied on modulus of ts of course considering the modulus of ts is positive and then this is what is the modulus of tx is just uh, the sequence of the modules of its coordinates like module x1 minus x2 x2 minus x3 etc so phi applied on this sequence gives the limit of module and in the module xn minus xn plus one x x belongs to c is convergent so this is zero and this does uh, this gives us that t star on psi is zero and um, uh, and that that's looking at this um, formula for uh, for uh, sorry uh, looking at this formula for the modules of the adjoint we also conclude that modulus of the adjoint on phi is zero and uh, in particular modulus of the adjoint on phi this is a function applied on any element in particular applied on e this e here is zero and this is not two and hence this is not the adjoint of the modulus applied on phi and then this functional applied on e so this um, here we can say that in this case this particular case the modulus of the adjoint is strictly less than the uh, adjoint of the modulus so we have uh, to uh, continue this is the end of the example but we have to continue our conclusions and uh, um, here uh, we assume that um, that there the uh, there is some c s from c to c we assume that there is some s from c to c such that the adjoint of uh, this s 
is the modulus of the adjoint of T. So modulus of the adjoint of T is an adjoint. If this is an adjoint, then this belongs to that space LR Vic star, uh, and uh, then that LR Vic star becomes a vector lattice under the given ordering or a risk space under the given ordering. So uh, by assuming this, we expect to get a contradiction. This cannot be. Uh, if this is true, then under the given ordering, that space is a risk space. But we want to prove that it is not a risk space under the given ordering. So having this here, uh, we uh, conclude that because modulus of the adjoint is uh, as adjoint, then the plus minus uh, adjoint of T is less than or equal to adjoint of S. And hence the uh, double adjoint, plus minus double adjoint of T is less than or equal to uh, double adjoint of S. And then we restrict, restrict those operators to see, to get that plus minus T is less than or equal to S and hence modulus of T is less than or equal to S. Now we will, we want to have that the reverse inequality as well. So we take positive X in C and then uh, for any index I that S applied on X, this S here, uh, I forgot to say that this T we assume that is the same T of the example. So uh, this SX I index uh, uh, of S applied on X is the I coordinate functional applied on SX then we use a joint property, a joint operator property uh, to get that uh, here, um, to have here S adjoint, but S adjoint is the modulus of uh, T adjoint. So we just put the expression, this expression for S adjoint. And then uh, we use that inequality about the modulus of the adjoint and the adjoint of the modulus, which is uh, a known theorem and have this inequality. Now we have the adjoint of the modulus. We again here use the property of the adjoint and this modulus T goes there. We have the co I've coordinate functional of this modulus of T on X and we have modulus of T on X uh, I've, uh, index. So SX is less than or equal to modulus of T on X for positive X or positive X this means that S is less than or equal to modulus of T. We had modulus of T is less than or equal to S. We have that uh, modulus of T great is greater than or equal to S. So we have that S is modulus of T. But if S is modulus of T, S adjoint is the adjoint of modulus of T. But S adjoint uh, was, uh, it was our assumption that it was the modulus of the adjoint of T. And this is now we, uh, the final step, step is that we got that the modulus of T adjoint is the adjoint of the modulus of T for that operator T for which we had shown that there is a strict inequality here, that the modulus of the adjoint is strictly less for than the, the, the adjoint of the modulus. So, so we can say that there is no, uh, there is no, uh, an operator uh, S such that the adjoint of this S is the modulus of the adjoint. So, under the given ordering, this is not a vector lattice. This is not a risk space because uh, it has an element such that the modulus of that element doesn't belong to this space. Um, and then having this um, uh, discussion, it will be interesting to go forward to our next uh, result here. Uh, so um, uh, what we have here is that uh, the, for the Banach lattices E and F, the following properties are equivalent and those properties are the following. First, that uh, the duals of E and F have the PSP uh, this is equivalent to the uh, space of regular uh, weak star to weak star continuous operators from the double dual of F to uh, the dual of E to have weak operator topology PSP. And I'm kind of bringing here these definitions to recall uh, for what convergence to zero, WOT convergence to zero and, and um, uh, WOT 
convergence, uh, P PSP property, WOT, PSP property here. Uh, and the third, this both are equivalent to the dual of the positive projective tensor product of this uh, lattice is to have the PSP. Uh, I uh, want um, uh, to just here recall again, once again, so TN, uh, a, con a continuous operator from E to F is said to converge to zero in weak operator topology if uh, any functional on this target space applied on TN on X, uh, uh, where X is any element of the domain space, goes to zero as N goes to infinity. And then any sequence, positive sequence here, uh, satisfying this uh, what convergence to zero uh, uh, is also norm convergence to zero. When we say in, in this subspace of X, when we say that this subspace of X has the weak operator topology PSP, we take those TN to be positive, and then uh, if norm of those TN goes to zero, then we say that um, this subspace to which this uh, sequence belongs, uh, it has the WOT PSP. So I just want to um, show that it's uh, really very easy to get the equivalence of one and three in this theorem. And how does that hold? How we have that uh, the PSP property of the duals of this Banach lattices is equivalent to the positive short property of the dual of the positive projective tensor product. This it follows because uh, this follows because uh, by Wu uh, Basque's theorem of 2012, um, uh, I can also go back there. Mm. So uh, this is uh, actually this. Uh, dual is what? It is LR of this space, comma R without the star. I mean, this is uh, the space of all operators from the positive projective tensor product into R, the dual. This is the space of all operators from the positive projective tensor product to the real number space. And this is uh, uh, lattice homomorphic and isometrically isomorphic to LREFR. So this gives that, let's say, these spaces are equal in the sense of lattice homomorphism and isometric isomorphism. And next, uh, we have that um, the previous theorem, which requires, uh, the, which um, gives conditions, the previous theorem for this space to have PSP. And we see that because E star and F star um, uh, have the, P, the, the and this this has I, I let um, that this space has the P, a PSP if and only if E star F star have PSP and R has PSP everything is satisfied so according to the previous theorem this has the PSP and by Bu and Basque's theorem these two are equal so uh, this has the PSP I mean I mean there is equivalence so if the necessary and sufficient conditions are satisfied, uh, of course. So that's why we have immediately the equivalence of one and three here. But and the next, uh, so it is only left to prove that one implies two, two implies three. And uh, I chose to show here a sketch of the proof of uh, why, why uh, one implies two. One is uh, that E star and F star have the PSP and we want that this regular big star to big star continuous operator space has weak operator topology PSP. So we choose um, a sequence SN uh, of operators which are positive. They are weak star to weak star continuous and uh, uh, they converge to zero in weak operator topology. There's three remarks that we made about the sequence of positive operators. First, uh, for any N natural, uh, the TN, uh, yeah, there exists a TN such that SN 
is the adjoint of this TN. This is because this SN is Vic star to Vic star continuous. So, and also it is what now or WOT now or convergence to zero in W uh, in weak operator topology. So that gives us the following convergence to zero because SN, let's see, takes uh, the double dual of F to uh, E dual. So SN on uh, for any uh, Y double star, the element of double dual of F, SN on Y double star is an element of E star here. And hence, this functional uh, is on, this is a functional on E star, it's applied on an element of E star, and according to that, um, what WOT converges to zero, this converges to zero. Uh, and we also note uh, that norm of SN is, of course, norm of TN adjoint, and the adjoint is the same as, has the same norm as the initial operator. So we have these equalities here. Uh, well, we need to gather um, uh, that this goes in norm to zero to have that uh, the WOT PSP property for this space. So, so we assume, uh, uh, expecting to get a contradiction that norm of XN does not go to zero. Uh, then, if norm of SN does not go to zero, then there exists, let's say, epsilon or alpha greater than zero, such that norm of Sn is greater than alpha for every n. This is up to sub subsequence because, for example, uh, for, for let's say there exists an epsilon greater than zero, such that for any natural number, there exists a number greater than that given natural number, such that S at uh, that number is in norm greater than alpha but we can choose for let's say that natural number to be n equals one and then choose n one greater than one so s norm of sn one will be greater than alpha and then we will choose uh, that natural number n to be n one little n one and then we will choose n two greater than n one and the norm of sn two um, will be greater than alpha. So this is the uh, mentioning here that up to a subsequence. So with a loss of generality, we assume that for any natural n, norm of Sn is norm of Tn, which we knew before, and is greater than alpha. Then using the definition for the operator norm, uh, we, we have that for each n, there exists an element in the closed unit ball of E, E, uh, such that Tn on Xn in norm is greater than equal to alpha. So we keep this in mind and then we um, use here the what uh, WOT convergence to zero of uh, the sequence of operators Sn. Actually, we already mentioned about this here because uh, we just repeat this uh, expression below like uh, for any functional x double star, any uh, um, uh, element uh, y double star in the corresponding spaces, this functional x double star applied on this Sn applied on y double star goes to zero. So we just have that same thing on the next page here. And then we uh, just substitute Sn with its expression in terms of Tn. So it's the adjoint of Tn and have that so uh, first of all, Tn uh, adjoint goes from F double star to E star. So this is an element of E star. This is an element of E star. The, uh, for any functional X double star, this element of E star goes to zero. This, sorry, this sequence of E star goes to zero. So this sequence is weakly null in uh, the dual of E, uh, but uh, because we are proving one implies two, and one was the PSP property of the lattices, of the Banach lattices E and F, then this E dual has PSP. And this is a weakly convergent uh, uh, to zero sequence. Of course, it is, uh, uh, oh, sorry, here, but uh, if we had chosen here, if we had chosen here, the positive part of Y 
uh, double star, let's say some positive y double star plus or any other positive element in the double dual of f, then this still holds, of course, because this is WOT property uh, of the sequence of operators. This holds for y double the double star plus here. And hence, we have that this sequence Tn star, Tn adjoint on y double star plus goes weakly to zero. And now we have that this sequence is also positive because we are talking about positive sure property. This is weakly null and is positive. So by the positive shoe property of dual of E, this goes to zero. The same works for the negative part. If we take here the negative part or some negative, uh, sorry, or some pos positive, any positive element here, because the negative part of a vector is positive. And um, so this sum goes to zero as n goes to infinity. Well, we go back to this arbitrary element of the uh, double dual of the Banachleti cell, and we uh, just um, uh, put here the representation of this vector y double uh, star as a difference of its positive and negative parts, and then we use triangular inequality to get that this goes to zero. Uh, then we have that this Tn adjoint on arbitrary element of the double dual of f in norm goes to zero. But we used here the PSP property of uh, the dual of E. Now we take uh, arbitrary, actually what we want to do is to show that norm of TNXN goes to zero. That's why we will take here the an, any element of the double dual of F and we will apply this on TNXN because this is an element of F, the dual of F, uh, let, because this is uh, because this is our uh, space here. Tn is takes xn to the dual of F here. So uh, when we will use the adjoint property to get here Tn adjoint on uh, y uh, double star. Uh, so Tn adjoint goes from F double star. Or, or double dual of f to the dual of e. So it's applied on an element of e. And then by the known inequality, we have that this is less than or equal uh, to the norm of Tn adjoint on this arbitrary element y double star times this norm of this bounded sequence xn. This goes to zero. Uh, well, but this was an arbitrary functional on f start on the dual of f. This y double star is a functional belonging to the double dual of f. So, uh, and this is a sequence in uh, uh, f uh, dual. Uh, for any functional on, uh, on f dual, this goes to zero. So this is weakly null in f dual. But F dual also has the PSP according to our assumption. So uh, norm of T and Xn goes to zero. But here uh, we do not need this type of procedure because Xn is taken to be positive. Um, and it was here using the operator norm here, um, positive operator norm actually. And, uh, and and Tn is uh, the, uh, pro, let's say, the, the, the adjoint of Tn is positive, so Tn is positive. And uh, so this goes to zero. And, um, uh, and this is a contradiction because we had that Tn on Xn is greater than equal to alpha for any n while we have here that Tn Xn in norm goes to zero. This contradiction, uh, this contradicts to this, this is not assumption, this is the result of assuming that norm of Xn doesn't go to zero. So now we have that norm of, sorry, norm of Sn goes to zero. And uh, this proves that this uh, space of regular weak star to weak star continuous operators from the double dual of F to the dual of E has the weak operator topology, PSP. 
So uh, after this, I just want to introduce a couple of uh, more results. Uh, these two are the generalizations of, uh, uh, of the previous results I already show, showed. Uh, so the, for Banach lattices, E1, E2, and EM, uh, the positive sure property of the duals of these Banach lattices is equivalent to the positive sure property of the positive projective tensor product. And uh, also it holds that having E1, EM, and F, all of them Banach lattices, and F uh, being dedicated complete, then the regular uh, M linear operator space has the positive sure property if and only if the duals of the spaces from E1 to EM have the PSP and F has the PSP. So it's kind of analogical to Knox theorem of 1992 to our theorem about bilinear uh, uh, regular operator space. And this is the multilinear case. Um, and there is also a, a nice um, kind of, gener not generalization, but kind of summary, part of a summary, but when proving, for example, that tan implies one of those equivalent conditions, we use a nice theorem here. And then, and, and uh, yeah, and that's it. And thank you so much for your attention. Uh, you are welcome with questions. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kazak. Um, are there any questions or, or comments? Your timing was perfect. Was exactly the exact minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I I put some questions in the chat. Oh, sorry, uh, chat. Yes, I put two or three questions. Your talk is very interesting. Thank you and, very much. And Fernanda is a friend of mine. Fernanda Botello. <laughs> No, this is Geraldo Botello. They they not uh, like relatives. It just a very frequent family <laughs> name. In yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I wanted to tell you that I also know Botello. <laughs> okay, so but would you like to read the questions in chat? Yes, uh, in chat. Yes, just one minute. I kind of try to find the chat here, but um, maybe I uh, just the chat here. Let's mm -hmm. click on it. Chat. So sorry, mm, I kind of don't see this chat here. Okay, anyway, then uh, first one was, you know, when you defined uh, isomorphism to a subspace, I asked, is there a schroeder Benstein theorem like, you know, uh, a, a e, as a, a e to a subspace of F and F to a subspace of E, then must E and F be isomorphic? Um, I, 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 I was able to open the chat. Uh, the, uh, like, page 11. Page 11. 11. Mm -hmm. Is there a schroeder Bestein like theorem? Uh, yes. Just one minute. If this is page 11. Oops. Page 11 here. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, it might be because this, uh, we try to find reference for this thing here, positive isomorphism. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a very good question. I, I will try to find out if okay, there is something you. about it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I, uh, then next, uh, I told about a seminar by Ochberg on Wednesday under Preserver webinar. And he yes. talked on Banach lattices and disjointness preserving map. Uh, it what? I apologize. This, this jointness preserving map. If uh, you know mod x uh, in mod y is zero, then uh, uh, the uh, image is satisfy the same condition. Actually, Timur is here. He can he can comment if he has any comments. Yeah, yeah. So first of all, this I must say that this was a joint uh, work with Pedro Tridesete, who gets a lot of mentioning today. And uh, yeah, so this was. This this was uh, this was a talk about almost disjointness preservers. I honestly don't see much intersection between that work and and uh, the and today's talk. Um, 
and uh, so so that's that's. Uh, but but anyway, thank you for 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 advertising my work and Pedro's work. Um, so and since I'm already, since I have already unmuted myself, um, Kazak, may I ask you to go back to page fifteen? Fifteen. Yes. Just one minute. Here. Yes. So. Uh, uh, so well, uh, so I think uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so when you define this y, take y one, y two, blah blah blah, to be yeah. x one minus x two, x three, negative x four, etc. Yeah. So yes. how do we know that this sequence belongs to the sequence to the sequence space C? Because I'm asking this because uh, you see the Oh, oh, okay, okay. We take it's, it like that. We want it to be in C, and just for this equality, we take it to, to satisfy modulus of that y to be less than or equal to x. And the, the idea is to apply the supremum on it, and we fix this x beforehand to get this expression, modulus of t applied on x. And um, or, yeah, sorry. So, but my question is, you see, let's say you start with a sequence consisting of only ones, then you get a sequence of interchanging positive negative ones, which takes you out of C. Where, uh, uh, where is that part? I apologize. That, so it's um, further down after the break. Here, uh-huh. So, oh, here. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so, so I, I mean, you you can start with a sequence consisting of ones, yes. and then you get one negative one, one negative one, yeah. which which no longer converges. Uh, so how do you how do you, uh, so so you you kind of my concern is that you can get outside of C oh, using this okay. procedure. All right. So if I take here one, 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 it's in C and it's positive. But if I take here one, negative one, one, negative one, then I need this to be, if it is modulus of T, yeah, I think, yeah, I need to think about this. Maybe this will not work, but there is another proof for this. Um, so this, I, I thank you very much for this comment because- I'm, I'm it's sorry really, about that. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's really okay. This is a preprint and we will use it to make the adjustment to have a proper, but this property here, that modulus of T applied on the element X has another proof, uh, which I did not use today. Uh, and so it's, it's, uh, out of doubt also that this is true because in this book, uh, Alephrontis and book, work and show example 1.74, this is given without explanation. So there should be several explanations of this. This one doesn't work. The first part works, but the second, actually, I also see that this is kind of out of C. And that's why the initial problem was this T operator T was given from L1 to L infinity. And then uh, we found, found out that uh, the operator is applied on an element which is not in its domain. So that's why we changed it from L1 and L infinity or something to C. So, uh, but uh, yeah, that's really gives a uh, way for, for uh, thank you very much. Yeah. No problem. Thank you for the right, Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Yeah, could I comment here? Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, um, about the same example. Um, you've made the assumption the modulus of T exists always um, uh, for an operator from C into C. Um, and in general, the regular operators from C into C doesn't form a lattice. So you, you'd need to some justification for that statement anyway. But I, I agree that this or a very similar example can easily be fixed. I've written it up somewhere for somebody else recently. Yes. Oh, I was wondering, um, could I take, like, because C is that I can complete? No, it's and, not. Okay, no, C is yeah. Not so, yeah. Sorry, yeah. And that, that makes that a kind of question whether the modulus of T exists or not, because the t target space needs to be that I can complete. 
Yeah, um, I think the supreme the modules will exist in this case. I think, but it needs some justification. Yes. Yeah. I think you just prove it by the definition of supremum that the supremum exists. Yeah, you can write down write down what it is and. Uh, I, I think I first works. It, it's need right. to prove that supremum exists, and so then yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other comments? So let me let me maybe go back to this to the question that was asked a few minutes ago about the Schroeder Bernstein. Uh, so, if uh, you um, only requires that kind of the, the Schroeder Bernstein in the sense that you have two Banach lattices, one embeds into the other, but they are distinct, uh, then the question, then the answer is negative, uh, because uh, there was actually very recent. So here I I, I should um, use, use an opportunity to part? advertise uh, the upcoming talk of. Uh, uh, of, of Mary Angelica Tursi on the seminar. Uh, so sh she constructs a, 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 which has recently been, recently been posted on archive. So she construct a, constructs an, a, a, a kind of a Gurari um, monoclatis, uh, mm -hmm. which in particular is universal for all separable ones. But mm -hmm. then uh, also we know that um, uh, the lattice of uh, 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 functions on the country discontinuum with values of, uh, of capital L1 is universal. So we have now two universal lattices, which, which for separable universal lattices, they yes. embed into each other, but they're distinct. Uh, okay. yeah. Now, if, uh, if uh, so, so no, so now if you, if you, um, require also some kind of complementation, yes. then, uh, then, then the question I think is open. Uh, but, um, uh, but and, and of course there are all kinds of, uh, all kinds of uh, things that Gowers was working on like in, in the nineties, like the square cube problems, which are I think still open for Banach lattices as well. So, so oh. there are all kinds of uh, strange oh. beasts which we may try to hunt. Um, yeah, yes, uh, it's really very interesting for me. I, I might communicate about the details of what you were describing, uh, if, if you won't mind. I, I, of course, not at all, no. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very thank much. you. Yeah, actually, Mary Angela, Angelica, yeah, she'll be speaking in two weeks. Um, so, all right, any, any other uh, comments? Thank you, Timur. Um, I'll well, thank you to Mary. I mean, she is uh, All right. Okay, so, if um, not, thank Yeah, go uh, ahead. Would you consider C0 instead of C now to uh, uh, correct that error? C0? Uh, uh, C0? C0? Uh, C0? Go goes to zero. It, I think we tried something like that. I have to think about that, but that the okay. best thing was C uh, we could think of. So maybe we can work on the element E because this was the problem uh, kind of that was there out of the domain. Yeah, yeah, just um, maybe I can think about this more later. If you use, okay. if you use C0 because it's got a continuous norm, the, the modulus of the dual is the dual of the modulus in that case. So you won't get a count example. Uh, Okay, yes, thank you very much. Um, if here, um, this is really. Um, for, for the uh, question of the operator preserving this jointness, I think that there are many uh, definitions which kind of claim that the positivity, for example, of weakly convergent to zero sequence is equivalent to uh, it being disjoint, not being positive, but disjoint. But I have seen a discussion telling this, this is not quite true. So I kind of excluded from this talk all of these equivalences. Uh, 
This is about um, Timur's question. Very much so um, that um, last uh, time that portion was substituted I am introducing uh, portion by uh, Vladimir Troitsky so the operator T here is the same from C to C and it's defined by the following equation here we claim that the modulus of T exists and is equal to S the operator S which is defined by the following equation here uh, and um, uh, it's immediately obvious that plus minus Tx is less than or equal to Sx for every positive vector in C, the Banach lattice of convergence sequences. And uh, this implies that plus minus T is less than or equal to S. Now, uh, what, 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 why do we have this? That we just observed that this operator S is an upper bound for the set containing T and minus T. Then we take another upper bound for this uh, uh, T minus T set, and um, uh, we uh, observe that this R is uh, greater than or equal to zero because we add up these two inequalities and get that two R is greater than or equal to zero. Then it suffices to show that this R is greater than or equal to S because that will mean that S is the least upper bound of this set, and hence this is the modulus of uh, the operator T by definition. So S will be the uh, modulus of T, and modulus of T uh, will prove to exist. So uh, we note that plus minus T, because of this condition here, plus minus Tx is less than or equal to Rx for every positive vector in C, and hence modulus of Tx is less than or equal to Rx for every positive x. Now we fix any positive vector in C. Then, because x is greater than equal, x is given by these coordinates, is greater than or equal than x1, 0, etc., and r is positive, we have this first inequality here. And then using that rx is greater than tx for any positive x, we have this inequality, and here we just apply the definition for t. Then by the same logic, in this second slide, we get that Rx is greater than or equal to this uh, uh, value of R at the following vector here, the, where uh, Xn is in nth position. So again, uh, using that Rx is greater than or equal to modulus of Tx, we have this inequality here. And then we just apply the definition of T because, for example, to get the n minus 1 coordinate, we subtract from 0 to Xn, get negative Xn. And to get the nth coordinate, uh, we subtract from Xn, the next coordinate, which is 0. So this is the form Rx. In fact, is greater than equal to this vector here, where uh, x was chosen beforehand and is a positive vector. And uh, here, uh, xn is in uh, n minus 1 and n position. So having this in mind, we once again um, apply similar technique. Rx is greater than or equal to R applied on the following vector, because again, X is greater than this vector and R is positive. So uh, we uh, introduced this vector as a sum of two vectors, use linearity of R to get R applied on each of these vectors. And then using this property, which we had above, we can say that R on X uh, is greater than or equal this vector where xn is n, in n minus 1 and n positions plus the vector where xn plus 1 is in n and n plus 1 positions. And then we sum those up and also conclude that this vector is greater than or equal to the following vector which has uh, xn plus xn plus 1 in its nth position. We denote this vector by yn. So what we get is that rx here is greater than or equal to yn. And the set of yn's, sx, first of all, sx, sx was defined to be the vector which coordinates x1 plus x2, x2 plus x3, etc. This sx is an upper bound for the set of all these yn's. But we want to see that and the uh, that, that Sx is the supremum of Yn's, what we do, we just take another upper bound for the set of Yn's, and uh, then this Z, which is Z, Z is greater than or equal to each of these elements of the, to, of uh, greater than 
uh, each of y n. So because, for example, z is greater than y1, z1 is greater than x1 plus x2, uh, which is the first coordinate of y1. Here it is. Uh, because z is greater than or equal to y2 when z2 is greater than or equal to the second coordinate of y2, etc. Be, because z, for example, is greater than or equal to yn, then zn will be greater than or equal to the nth coordinate of yn. So, but these uh, uh, inequalities just give that uh, all coordinates of z are greater than equal to each coordinate of sx. So z is greater than or equal to sx. sx is the supremum of the set of yn's. So what we had above is that the this Rx here is greater than or equal to each of Yn's and hence to, uh, to its uh, is greater than or equal to uh, the supremum of this set. So Rx is greater than or equal to Sx for any x in uh, uh, C and x positive. And hence, this means that R is greater than or equal to S. And S was observed to be the uh, an upper bound for T and minus T. R was taken to be an arbitrary upper bound of T and minus T. And hence, this exactly gives that S is the supremum of the set consisting of T and minus T. So S is the modulus of T by the definition. So this gives that part about the modulus of t because s on x is <sighs> x1 plus x2, x2 plus x3. But if if you won't mind, I'm sorry, but there might be another example. This is by Professor Wickstedt also uh, telling that the adjoint of uh, modulus is uh, not equal to the modulus of adjoint. And here, a uh, completely different operator is used. Again, we have the space of Banach, uh, convergent Banach, uh, uh, convergent sequences, the Banach lattice of uh, convergent sequences, and E is denoted to be this element. And it's interesting to see that the operator used here has the following form, T on X, is x minus this e times the limit of xk. And uh, what we observe here, uh, that x is the supremum of all those y's which are between uh, 0 and x, and the limit of this y, uh, uh, of the y, uh, uh, the limit of y k where k goes to infinity is 0. So having this in mind, we observe also that the identity operator is greater uh, when equal to t defined by this formula. Why? Because if we take a positive vector x having positive coordinates x1, x2, etc., then their limit is positive. E times this limit is positive as well, and this is ix here. So tx is obviously less than or equal to ix for positive x, hence, hence uh, t is less than or equal to i. So i is an upper bound for t and 0. Again, we take uh, another upper bound for t and 0. This is u. And since uh, u is greater than or equal to t, we get here that for any y between 0 and x, ui is greater than or equal to ty. u is greater than or equal to 0 gives that ux is greater than ui for every y between 0 and x. So ux is combined with these two inequalities. We get that ux is greater than or equal to ty for every y between 0 and x. And this means that this ux is an upper bound for all those values ty where zero, y is between 0 and x. But uh, this um, uh, set, uh, the, the set of ty's where y is between 0 and x, and additionally, the limit of y is 0, is a subset of those ty's where y is between 0 and x. So, uh, ux is also an upper bound for those ty's where y is between 0 and x and the limit of y is 0. Having this, we also um, uh, uh, observe that when this limit yk is 0, then ty is equal to y. This follows from the definition of the operator t. And then in this case, the set of ty's where y is between 0 and x and the limit of y is 0 is the set of those y where y is between 0 and x, a, x and limit of yk is 0. But at the, the, the very beginning, it was observed that the supremum of this set here, of those y's between 0 and x with uh, uh, y having limit 0, uh, the supremum is x of this set. So ux 
uh, is an upper bound for this set, x is the supremum, ux is greater than or equal to x. And hence, and x was positive, this gives that u is greater than or equal to i. So i is the supremum of t and 0, because i was the upper bound of t and 0, u was an arbitrary upper bound of t and 0. So u, uh, t plus, t positive part of the operator t exists, and it's equal to the identity operator. Having this, uh, then this uh, functional is defined, which uh, assigns to each vector x in C, uh, the limit of x, uh, limit uh, x k, k goes to infinity. And this uh, adjoint uh, applied on the functional applied on vector x returns uh, the functional applied on tx, which is the limit of tx. And the limit of tx is defined by the following formula. The, uh, which is uh, which gives zero. So what we have that t adjoint on this linear functional is zero. T adjoint on this functional is zero, and, um, and we will use it below because we will uh, have the formula for the positive part of the adjoint applied on the functional to be the supremum using that C star is the Dickin couplet as a dual space. But this supremum equals zero, uh, this can be deduced uh, using the fact that uh, this functional uh, epsilon infinity is an atom. And uh, then having that this is zero, me, uh, we keep this in mind. But on the other hand, we have that the adjoint of a uh, positive part of T on the functional is uh, the adjoint of I on the functional, which is uh, the functional itself, because we had proved that T plus equals I above. So we have that this T star plus does is not t plus star, the uh, positive part of the adjoint is not the adjoint of the positive part. And from this, it can be implied that the uh, modulus of the adjoint is um, the adjoint uh, is not the adjoint of the uh, is not the adjoint of the modulus. So we have kind of uh, every um, information to have complete the proof of the theorem. And thank you to Professor Troitsky and Professor Wickstead. Uh, thank you very much.